Good evening, and welcome to our scary stories. I'm your host, and tonight we invite you to join us on a journey of the supernatural, where reality and the uncanny blur. Prepare to step into the shadowed corners of Hawthorne Hollow, a small town where the lines between the innocent and the insidious blur. As night falls, we find ourselves at the mercy of a curse, one that transforms a humble scarecrow into a symbol of unspeakable fear. Our tale tonight is one of sin, redemption, and a battle of faith against a demonic entity. So, brace yourselves, and let's delve into the harrowing tale of Raven's Harvest. In the small hamlet of Hawthorne Hollow, an unsettling transformation spread its chilling tendrils. Standing lone in the heart of the verdant fields, where laughter and life used to frolic under the open sky, was the Scarecrow, a fixture of joviality and merriment once upon an autumn's eve. It was now a hollow figure, a sinister silhouette against the setting sun. The scarecrow, affectionately named Raven's Harvest by the denizens of the hamlet, seemed almost lifelike in its spectral stillness, sending a quiver of unease down the spines of those who dared cast their gaze upon it. The landscape, once vibrant and teeming with the soft whispers of golden wheat, and the occasional chuckle of a stream, had grown quiet and desolate. A frigid wind blew across the fields, causing the scarecrow's tattered clothes to flutter eerily, an ill omen to those who remembered its previously benign existence. The familiar scent of fresh earth and harvest was now replaced by a heavy, musty smell, an ominous harbinger of the unnatural transformation that had claimed the once jubilant protector of the crops. The crows, the vigilant guardians and sin-eaters of the land, now perched themselves away from the fields. Their squawking chorus, usually a symphony of rural life, turned into a mournful dirge. The sight of the jet-black birds clustering atop the church, away from the once bountiful haven, filled the heart with a foreboding dread. The warmth of the setting sun retreated from the field, leaving it in the mercy of shadows that seemed to dance, and twirl with the scarecrow as their ghastly marionette. A sense of fear and unease hung in the air, as tangible as the chill of the evening breeze. People began to avoid the path that led past the fields, their cheerful chatter and laughter replaced by hushed whispers and hurried footsteps. In the local tavern, a gathering hub for the community, the changes didn't go unnoticed. Burly farmers and modest homemakers alike would steal anxious glances towards the looming shadow of the scarecrow, their joyful tales of the day replaced with tense silence. Something's changed with Raven's harvest, old farmer Higgs grumbled, his gaze heavy with concern. Young Susie, the baker's daughter, chimed in with a trembling voice. It's as if the field is haunted. It's, it's just not right. The murmurs of agreement spread through the room, the air growing heavy with the burden of unspoken fear. Each face in the room was a canvas of tension, all eyes reflecting the ghastly image of the lonely scarecrow under the ghostly moonlight. The once thriving heartbeat of Hawthorne Hollow was succumbing to a fear it had never known the epicenter of which was the changed, ominous silhouette of the scarecrow known as Raven's Harvest. As the first chapter of this creeping horror closed, the hamlet was left under a shroud of impending doom. The jovial symbol that was once a source of joy had now become a symbol of unknown fear, and this was just the beginning. The fields had grown silent, the scarecrow stood solemn, and the story of the sinister Raven's Harvest had only just begun. The dawn broke over Hawthorne Hollow, its rosy fingers grazing over the town with a deceptive softness, hiding the chilling occurrence that was unfolding. The scarecrow, still presiding over the desolate fields, was now a harrowing sight under the innocent daylight. A farmer named Thomas ventured towards the field, his heart heavy with the duty of inspecting the once thriving cornfield. Thomas was a burly man, his skin weathered from years under the sun, his hands coarse from honest labor. However, as he drew closer to the scarecrow, he felt a frosty unease creeping into his bones, his usually confident stride becoming a hesitant shuffle. The familiar earthy aroma of the field seemed to be infused with a hint of rot, the once fresh morning air now tainted with a grim chill. As he neared the scarecrow, Thomas' world started shifting. His eyes widened as a dizzying rush of guilt and shame flooded his mind. His past mistakes, hidden sins, and buried regrets flooded back like vengeful wraiths, each memory slicing through him sharper than a farmer's scythe. The fields around him seemed to whirl, the air tasted bitter, and the morning light bore down on him with an unforgiving intensity. He staggered back to town, a man hollowed out by his own sins, his jovial spirit extinguished. 
As he entered the town, his fellow townsfolk stopped in their tracks, their cheerful greetings dying in their throats as they took in the sight of the once robust man, now a shell of his former self. Whispers of unease spread like wildfire, as the scarecrow's ominous shadow grew longer in their minds. Over at the local tavern, the revelation of Thomas's condition stirred a buzzing anxiety. Farmer Higgs, his forehead creased with worry, voiced the dread that now lodged in their hearts. The curse of Raven's harvest, he muttered, his voice barely a whisper, yet it echoed through the silent room. Susie, her eyes round with terror, gave a timid nod. The vibrant atmosphere of the tavern drowned under the heavy wave of dread. The ordinary and the supernatural collided in a terrifying spectacle as the citizens of Hawthorne Hollow confronted a horror that shook their town's very foundations. The day ended with the town shrouded in fear, the once cheerful murmur of the hamlet reduced to hushed whispers of terror as they braced themselves for the night. And all the while, standing sentinel over the hollowed fields, the scarecrow remained, a horrifying testament to the terror of Raven's harvest. The congregation of crows perched on the steeple of the aged church seemed more ominous than ever as Father McAllister, a man of stern countenance yet kind eyes, watched the sun dip beneath the horizon. The hamlet of Hawthorne Hollow had long been his home, his refuge, and now his battlefield against an unseen foe. Father McAllister was no ordinary man of the cloth. Behind his solemn, slate-gray eyes hid a tumultuous past a plethora of emotions and experiences that had shaped him into a stalwart spiritual guardian. He was the town's rock, their lighthouse amidst the stormy sea, and his own demons only fortified his resolve to protect his people. His gaze traced the path to the cursed fields, lingering on the scarecrow that had become a grim sentinel. His senses picked up on the subtle changes, the once sweet smell of summer meadows replaced by an acrid scent of rot and decay. He felt the pervading cold that clung to the air, making the leaves of the nearby trees shudder and retreat. The shift in the crow's behavior did not escape his observant eyes either. The birds, usually scattered across the fields, feasting and squawking merrily, now huddled atop the church, their eyes seemingly locked onto the scarecrow. He could almost sense their dread, their refusal to fly over the fields resonating with his growing concerns. He found himself drawn to the spectacle of the scarecrow, yet as he neared the field, the whispering wind seemed to carry hidden secrets and buried fears. A sudden feeling of dread washed over him, a chill that seemed to seep into his bones and echoed the cold dread that had seeped into the heart of the hamlet. The disarray of the previously abundant field under the twilight sky was a chilling sight, one that made his heart grow heavy with apprehension. In the heart of the town, a sense of unease was growing. The sight of Father McAllister approaching the fields had the townsfolk peering anxiously from their windows. The once bustling marketplace was now subdued, whispers of worry echoing through the narrow lanes. Back in the tavern, the sight of the father's silhouette against the backdrop of the cursed fields elicited silent prayers from Susie, Farmer Higgs, and the others. They watched as the father paused before the scarecrow, a silent plea for protection whispered into the winds. As Father McAllister returned to the church that night, he carried with him the heavy burden of the town's fears, his own apprehension, and a resolution hardened like a diamond under the relentless pressure. The dark shadow of Raven's harvest loomed over the horizon, but in the quiet church under the watchful eyes of the crows, a beacon of hope had begun to flicker. Under the gray shroud of a gloomy dawn, Father McAllister found himself drawn towards the fields, the ominous figure of Raven's harvest casting a long, grim shadow that seemed to reach out to him. As he drew nearer, an icy chill nipped at his skin, the familiar scent of morning dew replaced by the unsettling odor of decay that hung heavily in the air. As he approached the scarecrow, a cold gust of wind whipped around him, tugging at his robes and sending a shiver down his spine. The world around him seemed to fade, replaced by a haunting stillness that was only broken by the distant cawing of the crows perched on the church steeple. His fingers grazed the rough, straw figure, the simple touch triggering a surge of haunting memories from the depths of his consciousness. His worst sins, long since confessed, repented, and tucked away, began to surface. They wrapped around him like a bitter wind, each memory searing into his mind with a clarity that made him gasp. Deeds done in youthful ignorance and moments of weakness crowded his vision, their stark reality far colder than the wind that swept across the fields. The fields, once a symbol of life and prosperity, seemed to morph into an icy wasteland of guilt and regret, the rustling of the wheat sounding like accusing whispers. 
Back in the town, the worried inhabitants watched from behind curtain-clad windows, their breaths held as they saw their priest, their beacon of hope, stagger back from the scarecrow. The sight was a silent blow, their hearts throbbing with a shared dread as the curse of Raven's harvest unfolded before their eyes. In the safety of his church, Father McAllister found solace under the soft glow of the candles, their light a stark contrast to the darkness he had encountered. The scent of aged parchment and sacred incense helped to dispel the stench of decay that seemed to cling to his senses. As he knelt at the altar, the crow-filled silence outside his sanctuary seemed to amplify his whispering prayers. The day closed with a sense of foreboding, the townsfolk exchanging whispers about the priest's encounter with the scarecrow. Yet amidst the fear, a thread of hope still lingered, for they knew that if anyone could fight this unseen foe, it was Father McAllister. The looming specter of Raven's Harvest had marked the town, yet within the sturdy walls of the church, a spiritual warrior prepared for the battle ahead. As the night draped Hawthorne Hollow in an ominous hush, Father McAllister found himself battling the phantoms of his past. His small room in the church, usually a haven of peace and solitude, now resonated with echoes of past mistakes. The feeble glow of the single candle on his desk flickered as he recalled his history, its light casting long, dancing shadows on the walls that seemed to mimic his personal demons. Father McAllister had not always been a man of the cloth. Once a spirited young man named Patrick, he was known for his fiery temper and reckless behavior. His past was littered with the rubble of broken promises and damaged relationships, each mistake a stepping stone on his path to spiritual awakening. The sweet, earthy aroma of his well-thumbed Bible filled his senses as he traced his fingers over the worn-out leather cover. The hushed whispers of the night outside seemed to amplify the voice of his conscience within the silent confines of his room. Each memory seemed to have a physical weight, pressing down on him like a heavy boulder, his remorse as raw and real as the chill seeping in through his window. Meanwhile, the town of Hawthorne Hollow lay restless under the moonlight. A homes, once filled with joy and warmth, now held an undercurrent of apprehension. From the old, creaking town hall to the local tavern, every corner was filled with the echoes of hushed conversations about the strange happenings and Father McAllister's confrontation with Raven's Harvest. In the darkened corners of the tavern, huddled around lukewarm mugs of ale, Farmer Higgs and the townsfolk shared worried glances. Susie's soft voice broke the silence. Do you think Father McAllister can save us? Her question hung in the air, mirroring the uncertainty that gripped their hearts. As the night grew darker, the sinister silhouette of Raven's Harvest seemed to loom larger over the fields. Despite their fear, the people of Hawthorne Hollow found a glimmer of hope in Father McAllister's strength. The priest was carrying not just the burden of his past sins, but the hope and trust of an entire town. His personal journey of atonement had begun, intertwining with the fate of Hawthorne Hollow itself. As Father McAllister knelt in prayer, the world outside seemed to still, as if holding its breath. As he sank deeper into his prayer, his surroundings faded into a misty void, the silence echoing louder than the loudest church bell. His senses began to blur, and he found himself standing in an endless field of wheat, under a sky speckled with crows. The crows descended, their feathers glistening under the spectral moonlight, each landing softly near him. Their usual raucous calls were replaced by an eerie silence. Their glossy eyes bore into him, conveying a message words couldn't express. He watched as one crow, larger than the rest, flew over to the scarecrow, its beady eyes filled with a strange kind of understanding, a shared knowledge of the sin and guilt that tied the creature to the scarecrow. With an explosive caw, the large crow flew back to the steeple, the rest following in a flurry of black wings, their departure leaving an echoing silence. As Father McAllister emerged from his trance, he carried with him a profound understanding. The crows, the sin-eaters, were the key. A new day dawned on Hawthorne Hollow, bringing with it a palpable change. Father McAllister, emerging from the confines of the church, bore an air of newfound purpose. His eyes, once heavy with dread, now held a spark of resolution. In the heart of the hamlet, the change was noticed. Farmer Higgs, crossing paths with the father, felt a wave of relief at the sight of the renewed determination. At the local tavern, Susie served her baked goods with a lighter heart, the news of Father McAllister's change in demeanor a balm to their collective fear. As the sun cast long shadows over the haunted fields, Father McAllister stood before the scarecrow, his mind full of plans and prayers. The quiet cawing of the crows filled the silence, their presence a stark contrast to the ominous stillness of the scarecrow. 
The chapter closed with the image of a spiritual warrior standing against a symbol of fear. Ensign, the once jovial icon of harvest, had transformed into a sinister entity, and the town's savior was ready to challenge it, armed with his faith and the symbolic guidance of the crows. With a newfound sense of purpose, Father McAllister plunged into preparation for the impending confrontation. His room in the church, typically a sanctuary of peaceful solitude, was now a study of fervent activity. Spread across his wooden desk were old scriptures, their pages filled with forgotten prayers and ancient rites of exorcism, their musty scent blending with the lingering aroma of sacred incense. Outside, the hushed town of Hawthorne Hollow lay under the midday sun. The usual hubbub of daily activities were replaced by a veil of anxious anticipation. Their hearts were full of hope and fear, their eyes invariably drawn towards the distant figure of the scarecrow and the church, the two opposing symbols standing tall under the cloud-dappled sky. As he read through the ancient texts, Father McAllister felt the weight of his responsibility. He was no stranger to the spiritual battle of good versus evil, but the entity within the scarecrow was more potent than any he had ever encountered. It fed on sin, twisting it into a horrifying experience for the cursed, a fact that made the forthcoming encounter all the more daunting. Meanwhile, the crows maintained their vigil atop the church, their constant cawing a grim soundtrack to the silent town. Their black forms against the azure sky were a reminder of the supernatural phenomenon, their refusal to approach the scarecrow a testament to the terror of Raven's harvest. Inside the local tavern, the somber atmosphere was occasionally pierced by hushed conversations about Father McAllister's mission. Susie, her hands kneading the dough with more force than necessary, offered silent prayers for the priest. Farmer Higgs, sipping his ale with a thoughtful expression, couldn't help but glance at the church, a flicker of hope in his aged eyes. As the day wore on, the entire hamlet was wound tight with suspense. Their shared fear was a palpable entity, their collective hope a beacon of light in the surrounding darkness. The priest, their spiritual shepherd, was preparing to face off against the demonic entity that held their town in a grip of terror. The stage was set for a confrontation that would determine the fate of Hawthorne Hollow and the legacy of Raven's Harvest. The moon hung heavily in the ink-stained sky, its pale light casting an ethereal glow over Hawthorne Hollow. This was the night the townsfolk had been anxiously awaiting the night Father McAllister would face the entity haunting their scarecrow. As the hour approached, the usually lively tavern was filled with hushed whispers and darting glances towards the distant silhouette of the church. Each clink of glass and shuffle of feet seemed to echo in the stifling silence, amplifying the growing tension. Meanwhile, Father McAllister, cloaked in his traditional robes, stood at the threshold of the church. The scent of ancient parchment, candle wax, and sanctity followed him out clashing with the biting chill of the wind sweeping across the barren fields. With a deep breath, he began his journey towards the scarecrow, the flickering candle in his hand casting an island of light against the encroaching darkness. The silence was only broken by the rustling of dry leaves under his feet, and the crow's eerie chorus from the church steeple. As he reached the scarecrow, a gust of wind swept across the field, carrying a faint whiff of decay and stagnant water. His heart pounded against his chest as he faced the scarecrow, the heart of their terror. Back in the town, all activity had ceased. Susie and Farmer Higgs joined the others in silent vigil, their eyes straining against the darkness, their hearts pounding in sync with the priests. A shared breath was held as the first words of exorcism echoed across the field, carried by the wind to every anxious ear. As Father McAllister began the ancient rites, the night seemed to hold its breath. The cold, eerie stillness was only broken by the chilling sound of his resounding voice, the Latin incantations weaving through the air like invisible threads pulling at the very fabric of the supernatural. As the night grew darker and the tension thicker, Hawthorne Hollow braced itself. Their beacon of hope stood solitary against the embodiment of their fear. The duel between human and supernatural had begun under the watchful eyes of the crows. The anticipation of what was to come made every passing moment seem like an eternity. The fate of their town was hanging in the balance as the night of harvest unfolded. With each uttered incantation, the atmosphere around Father McAllister grew heavier. The once benign scarecrow appeared to twist and contort within the darkness, its silhouette dancing in the glow of the flickering candlelight. A sudden gust of wind swept across the field, extinguishing the flame and wrapping the scene in an unforgiving darkness. The darkness was a living, breathing entity, an impenetrable void that carried a bone-chilling cold. 
It wrapped around Father McAllister, the familiar landscape swallowed by a terrifying abyss. It was in this terrifying void that his past sins returned, their shadows more threatening than ever, each regret a phantom clawing at his resolve. He experienced his past transgressions in visceral detail, each one designed to batter his spirit. His youthful recklessness, the relationships he had harmed, the promises broken, each memory bore down on him, their collective weight threatening to drown him. Back in Hawthorne Hollow, the abrupt darkness was a silent scream. Eyes strained to penetrate the ominous void, ears strained to pick up any sounds over the howling wind. In the tavern, hands unconsciously clung to each other, their shared fear a suffocating fog. In the oppressive darkness, Father McAllister stood firm. Though his past sins tore at him, he clung on to his faith with a fervor that defied his inner turmoil. He was not just fighting his battle, but that of Hawthorne Hollow. Their fear, their hope, their faith interlaced with his own, giving him strength. With renewed determination, he resumed his exorcism, his voice rising above the moaning wind, the Latin words of release a beacon in the dark. Each word was a strike against the entity, a declaration of his unyielding faith. The battleground was set within the eternal blue, the priest standing as a bulwark against the monstrous entity. Hawthorne Hollow waited with bated breath, their collective heartbeats echoing the passing seconds. A war was raging under the cover of darkness, a war where their redemption and their sin-eaters' repentance hung in the balance. The outcome of this duel would determine the future of their hamlet and the legacy of Raven's Harvest. The duel between the man of faith and the entity of sin raged on in the cover of darkness, the priest's voice echoing through the abyss like a lone warrior against an unseen foe. Each Latin phrase that rolled off Father McAllister's tongue carried the weight of his determination and the hopes of Hawthorne Hollow. Then, in a flash, the darkness lifted. A blinding light burst from the scarecrow, illuminating the once ominous fields with an ethereal glow. The force of the light knocked Father McAllister back, his final word of release swallowed by the sudden gust of wind that swept across the field. Back in the town, the sudden burst of light was like the dawn after a seemingly endless night. Eyes squinted, hearts thumped, and breaths hitched as they looked towards the source of the light. There, at the heart of the glow, stood Father McAllister, his silhouette illuminated by the divine light that radiated from the scarecrow. As the light dimmed, the scarecrow returned to its original state, a benign guardian of the fields. The unnatural chill that had hung over the field lifted, replaced by a gentle breeze that carried the sweet scent of fresh earth and ripening crops. The menacing aura that once emanated from the scarecrow was gone, replaced by an almost peaceful stillness. The moment the morning light touched the scarecrow, a chorus of cause broke the silence. The crows took flight, their wings slicing through the crisp morning air as they soared over the field, their flight a symbol of the lifting curse. Father McAllister, exhausted yet victorious, made his way back to the town, his heart lighter than it had been in days. As he stepped into the heart of Hawthorne Hollow, a cheer erupted from the townsfolk, their joy ringing through the air. In the local tavern, Susie, Farmer Higgs, and the rest breathed sighs of relief, their faces glowing with newfound hope. Their shared nightmare was over, the entity banished, and their town freed from the curse. The final chapter closed with Hawthorne Hollow returning to its peaceful rhythm. The Scarecrow, now just a guardian of the fields, stood under the watchful eyes of the sin-eating crows, the harrowing tale of Raven's Harvest a memory etched into the heart of the town. The story ended with a testament to human resilience, a reminder of redemption, and the triumph of faith over fear. Thank you for joining us tonight on our scary stories. We've journeyed together through the haunted fields of Hawthorne Hollow and emerged from the grip of Raven's Harvest. It's been one chilling tale of darkness and light, sin and redemption, fear and faith. But remember, when you look out into the fields at night and spot a lone scarecrow standing guard, Ask yourself, is it really just straw and old clothes, or does a darker tale lurk beneath? Until next time, keep your lights on, and remember, every shadow holds a story. This is our Scary Stories signing off for tonight.